Welcome everybody to Falcon Plays Judgment Apocalypse Survival Simulation Episode Number One. What are you laughing about? Is it the title? Look, let me tell you this much about the title. It's kind of long, yes, I understand that, but it already explained for me and for you guys what the game's all about. I don't have to sit here and explain it anymore. It is obviously an apocalyptic game, it is a simulation of an apocalypse, and the goal is to survive. The, t the title alone took care of this for us already. You know, jokes aside though, this is not only any regular apocalypse, we're not talking about zombies, we're not talking about bombs dropping and some sort of like post-apocalyptic survive against other humankind world. This is the big one, ladies and gentlemen. So we're talking about fire and brimstone coming down from the skies, rivers and seas boiling, 40 years of darkness, earthquakes, volcanoes, the dead rising from the graves, human sacrifices, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. If you got that reference, then I like you a lot. Anyway, let's get underway over here. Alrighty, guys and gals, we will talk more about this game here pretty soon because there's a lot to talk about it here that I want to explain about. But before we do that, we have a little bit of a, well, I generated a world. The worlds will be randomly generated. You could actually either create a seed or have the game just give you a random seed. And I let it give me a random seed. <laughs> Baby. Anyway, um, while out camping, four of you were attacked by a single powerful creature. Together, you barely managed to take it down, but Ned didn't make it. Oh no, not Ned! All around, more red eyes told of awful things looming in the shadows. You grabbed your supplies and made your way back to town, only to find it has been overrun, burning under a red sky. The apocalypse has begun. I told you, the Ghostbusters quote wasn't just in vain, my friends. The three of you made your way to a nearby hidden valley that you used to hike to. It seems safe for now. You should set up camp, start with a shelter, a place to eat and rest. Building a log cabin with a food table and a bed is going to be our main priority right now to start off with. So, I have the tutorials right here enabled. It will kind of guide us through the beginning phase, so just so you guys know what I'm doing. And as well as give, me yourself a, give myself a bit of a refresher course, because I haven't played this since, oof, you know, sometime mid-2015, late 2015, I was testing out the closed beta and... Uh, we'll talk more about the closed beta here pretty soon. So, let's see. Uh, creating task. Survivors choose their own task. Once created, collect wood by left-clicking a tree and select shop tree. There are many interactive objects in the game. To create, and constru uh, to create construction or crafting task, open the build or craft menu. So you got it. So, right now we do need some wood. Of course we do. When don't you need the old woody wood wood? We also need to build a cabin. So let me find out what we have in our inventory at the moment. We have 10 boards, we have 5 bricks, we have 60 wood. Let's see if we can build a wood, the cabin straight up. Excuse me. You know, teach me more stuff? Alrighty. Building. To create build tasks, select an object when you choo and choose where to place it. To continue building more of the same objects, hold shift while placing it. So you could do like uh, mass building, which is pretty good. Certain objects can only be built in certain locations, such as mines that are built on resources or beds that can only be built indoors. Available positions are highlighted when placing the building. Alrighty, so... Obviously, you can't just put beds outside. What are you, some sort of savage? <laughs> you can only build items in certain spots in this game, so keep that in mind. So right now, we need to build a log cabin. Obviously, we could build a smaller one. This is going to be a dimension of 4x4. Four four. This is going to be 5x4. The first one that I like to build normally is the one that's going to hold our food table, our bed. You know, just like the living area. Then the other small one, I make it with the... Experiment table and the workbench, which is going to be like a place for us to kind of go in there, research some science, some way to slay demons, like research the dark arts and holy magic, like the the magic circle. There's a lot of cool stuff in this game, so um, I'm kind of excited to check it out. Anyway, um, first things first, log cabin for us to kind of live in here. Let me zoom on out. Break on through to the other side. Let's see here. Um, wow, we have a pretty wooded area. You know what? I don't mind this too much because it makes me feel a little bit safer. I guess we could just place this cabin right on over here for now. Actually, right here seems pretty good. Maybe right here, because it'll give us enough room to get the other one in there. But I need to get around, huh? Well, I could always cut down trees, so that's not a big deal. So, yeah, this is good for now. Camera movement, WASD, you got it. Zoom in and out. I've already been doing that, dog. Alright, so as soon as you set down a task, all these individuals will go over there and start working on them, preferably, hopefully. Andy, do you want to help out over there? Oh, you know what? They actually build stuff really fast in this game, which is actually pretty neat, so I don't have to worry too much about that. But now let's actually start acquiring some supplies for the future. So, normally, you can come over to a tree, click on it, and set it down for uh, tree shopping action. However, that takes a long time if you go one by one, right? So what I like to do is go into the task over here and say chop down trees, I want you to bring down 
let's say all these right here. As you can see, now we have all of them highlighted for chopping down, which is good. We can also go into old... <laughs> I'm not sure what happened to these, um... These used to be camps at some point or another, but I'm not sure what happened to them. Like, they look like all bloodied up. I mean, I guess the apocalypse did run through here at some point as well, and we just kind of came in afterwards, so all these people got slaughtered. Sucks to be them, but you can come over here and actually pillage them for scraps and other supplies, which we needed to build some other stuff down the line as well. So, that's what that's for. We also have some rocks that you could actually mine out that way. We also have clay. We also have metal, but for the metal, you do need um, a different type of um, research opened up. We have some clay over here. And we're going to also be able to ex... Uh, not expedite, but <laughs> we're going to be able to explore other different maps as well. And actually go to other maps and other stuff like that when you go over to the map system over here. Um, world view. Click on the location to see enemies and loot before entering. Scout to reveal more of a map. Send scavenge missions to retrieve valuable materials. Sometimes strangers in trouble are spotted. They cannot survive for long without assistance, and survivors on their way to missions can be recalled back. Yada yada yada. So, for instance, this is where we live right now. If I wanted to come down and possibly find some medical supplies, we'd come out of the hospital area, we'd set up a scavenge mission, or we could go out there and scout it beforehand to find out how many enemies exactly there are. And what kind of more loot there is, although this is already telling me, but you could do a even a more in-depth scout if you want to. So, it's actually pretty neat. And this will be for our outside scouting missions, but I'm jumping ahead at the moment. Let's go back into the um, area over here. So we have Andy. What is Andy about? Andy is going to be a good crafter for us, a good combatant, and a little bit learned in the occult. How about that? And we have Andrew. Andrew uh, does not excel. Actually, he's very occult-oriented. So what, what do I have here? Did you guys cause this apocalypse to happen? You you got him a cultist? And Harry is going to be a one in science, or a science, as the game calls it right here. And um, we also have another one in occult. I'm telling you, my three people are the people who caused the apocalypse in this game. All of them just happen to be, you know, well-versed in the occult. Yeah, give me a break, buddy. Um, so let's get the game rolling over here, meanwhile. Let's talk more about it as they um, do some stuff. As you can see, they build stuff really fast in this game, which is actually good. I don't really... I don't like it when games take forever to build shit, you know, sometimes. You know, it's just kind of like, I want it done, just get it done. What's the point of me sitting down here and waiting an extra five minutes for it to happen? So I really like that about the game. Everything is just like, you know, just about quick and done. There's some waiting involved sometimes, like when it comes to, like, mining rocks and chopping down trees. But, you know, just getting, like, a blog cabin up and running, really easy. I don't mind that too much. Oh, we also have a well. Uh, we should probably cut down some trees around here because I'm going to be able to collect water at some point, so... There you go. Over here we have, um, 69... Haha, <laughs> of course we would. We have, um, food worth for 69 hours. We have 81 hours worth of, um, water. We have 155 scraps. We have no science, um, research just yet. We have no occult research, and this is going to be for our menu. So, all these things we'll be doing here pretty soon. Now... B meanwhile, they come over here and start chopping that down. We can check out our supplies over here. We're up to 42 wood again. Great. Let's go ahead and start building some of the basics. Yeah, I know about the food and the water and the, the bed. I got it. Let me build this here meanwhile before the game yells at me again. We will do... Let's say a bed like somewhere up here. And we'll also do... Food table. Yeah, you know, this is where you eat. This is where you sleep. So we'll do the food table up here. Okay. And let's see if we have enough wood. We could probably start building the second log cabin right here. Fits just barely. We'll also go ahead and just chop down this tree so we have a line of walking through. Not that you actually needed, needed, but you know, might as well have it already getting ready to go. So let's talk more about Judgment here. This is a game that I actually got accepted into the closed beta bat or the closed alpha, because it's still an alpha game to my knowledge. Um, learning to farm. You know, you know, let me explain this game or what? All right, fine. Learning to farm. You're, you now have a base of operations, but you are far from safe. Your supplies won't last forever, because diamonds last forever. Which, that's not even the point! I'm not even sure why that song has been stuck in my head for the last two weeks now, but it has been. Every time I hear forever, it's always like, diamonds are forever. Okay, stop. If you don't find food and water source, you won't live long enough to worry about those creatures finding you, obviously. Humans need water and food. It's a known fact, okay? You don't tell me, you smart ass old falcon, I don't need any water or food, I'm fine. You don't lie to me, Mr. Robot. Uh, before you can grow your own food, you need to learn how. Build an experiment table and research farming. You got it, we shall do that. So we need a research table, that's the reason why I made the second log cabin, this will be our research and building area pretty soon. Um, I got invited into the closed alpha. 
I was planning to actually cover the game back then, sometime in 2015, late 2015, mid 2015, blah 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 blah, it doesn't really matter. Um, the problem was that there was a lot of bugs. I lost the save file at least twice while, you know, testing the game for us to, you know, check it out for the channel. And that's something I don't really like happening in games, especially for a series for the channel, because if I play a game for a couple of episodes, I come back later on, I'm like, Hey guys, we have to start all over again. It's never usually pretty good. Nobody wants to hear that. I don't want to hear it, to be honest with you, much less you guys. So I decided to give it a little bit of a, little bit of a time period to, you know, develop a bit more. It finally hit Steam Early Access, um, so now it's in Steam Early Access. I've heard really good things about it on Steam Early Access, so I figure, hey, you know what, now that it's, um, you know, hopefully not gonna be issues for us, we'll give it a spin here for a couple of episodes and see what's up. So, that's the, my history with this game so far. I don't know much about it beyond that, other than, you know, demons attacking and whatnot. Let's see, so, let's go ahead and start building... Uh, I guess we need the experiment table, right? So we'll place that right on over here. Now, people will randomly set tasks for themselves. You could also go ahead and prioritize your task. If you don't like, um, say, Andy over here wanting to be a crafter above, like, say, fetching water, you could go ahead and move that upwards and no big deal. So things like that will be taken care of. If they're hungry or tired, they'll go ahead and, you know, prioritize that. Which is, you know, the reason why you probably always want needs is the first thing. Because if they're not if they're hungry, if they're, you know, not necessarily drinking water, their crafting ability will drop, their combat ability will drop, etc. etc. So let's see. Let me look at my inventory here momentarily while we pause the game. Uh, as you can see, homeboy over here. Andrew is already researching and picking up some science research points for us. Which we do need how many is it? Let's see, research over here. Uh, yeah, so once you hang out over there, you'll get science points, and then you can use the science points to, you know, craft more difficult stuff. Now, let me tell you this much. Sometimes you are going to require, like, something like metal to create something metal-related. Like, for instance, to mine for metal, I think you need metal initially. And, obviously, you're thinking, well, Falcon, if you need metal to acquire metal, how, where does the first metal come from? You don't have it. You're right. You have to go out and actually explore and loot for metal before you can turn it into a metal mine and, you know, yada, yada, yada. I mean, we'll cover that here pretty soon. But for now, we need farming. Farming's all the way down here. You require 10 points of science, so 2 of 10. We need to give Andrew a bit more time over here to kind of do his thing. So meanwhile, that actually happens. We'll have... Uh, let's actually have some people come over here and collect some scraps. I guess Harry will take care of that. And in terms of water, I think we're good, but let's have fetch water. No, don't detonate the goddamn water, okay? That seems like a bad idea. <laughs> Let's go ahead and just blow up the only water source that we have. Excellent idea. So now, as you can see, Andy for some reason swamped over to supplies and Andrew went up here. What does that mean for us? It means that Andrew probably has a higher priority when it comes to um, collecting water. Let's find out. Priorities. Uh, fetch water. Above. Mm, what would the other one be? Search debris. Scrap some medicine? Huh. Well, I guess probably Andy had a higher one for this one, and they just kind of rotated over. I don't know. But it's basically all under priorities. If I don't want that, I can just go ahead and sign off the uh, priorities, and then uh, I can just have them work manually myself. But it's a lot easier if you just have them, like, prioritizing. Just switch up the priorities based on however you want it. So it's kind of like RimWorld in that regard as well, so not really a big deal. Now, <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of Andrew having to pick up water and coming down over here. I wish we could make a door over here so he could just be like, whoop, 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 whoop. As opposed to be like, yerp, yerp. But, you know, whatever. Let's also speed up time here a little bit as well so we can get more of this shit done faster. We are about to get up to 10 points. We got them. Excellent. Now for our farming little area. Um, here's what I'm going to do. Here is what I am planning to do. I'm going to go ahead and let's see about creating tasks. Let's do a chop down tree for this area. I want my farm to be up here if I can. So let me get rid of these trees if we obviously can. And let's can cancel out the collecting scraps. Let's have Andy over here work on that. And water. I think we're good for a while, so let's cancel that one as well. Let's put this like in four times speed. Harry, continue researching that. And wow, Harry is going to work on that research table. <laughs> Look at those points just pile up. Oh boy. Uh, let's go into... Oh! Somebody got sleepy! Who's sleepy? Andrew's sleepy. I'm pretty sure they're all sleepy. They'll probably take turns sleeping. I could set up another bed right now, but I don't really see it as much of a priority, so I'll just wait up on that one. Let's go into research and open up the farming. Uh, you figure out how to farm, use this knowledge, and build some farms. They will provide a steady supply of food. Resources are running low, but there are plenty lying around in the area. You can chop trees for wood, quarry for stone and clay, and search debris for scraps. Build two veggie farms. That's going to be our goal right now, so... As soon as our friends are over here done chopping down these trees, look at these guys' work, man. 
I have never seen people take down trees this fast. It's amazing. Alrighty. Let me pause momentarily and let's get this um, field up and running. So we have to go into build. And we have vegetable farm. It's going to require 15 scrap, which we do have. 20 wood. Uh-oh. We only have to get one. Uh-oh. Hey, um, my friends, we need a bit more trees here, huh? Let's have you chop down these trees really quickly. And meanwhile, you guys do that. I'll put a veggie farm. I'm going to say, like, close to our little safe haven, close to the well as well. We can pretend that they're watering it from there, you know? So we'll do, like, bam. And soon enough, we'll get the second bam. Give me the second bam. Oh, we need stones, actually. Hey. Hey, yeah, yeah, you jerks. What happened to your stone collecting, huh? I guess I never set you up for that. It's my bad. It's not really their fault. Don't blame them. Blame me. I'm pretty sure everybody blames me, though, so, you know. Why am I even talking about? Uh, let's come down over here and quarry the old stony stone. Andy? Somebody? Oh, they're picking up some food. Get some food. Here comes Andrew. There you go, Andrew. Now, to my knowledge, I'm not sure if the the stone, you'll see it hang out here for a long time as they'll keep mining and mining. It's going to eventually deplete over time, but it takes a while before that actually happens. So, you know, it's actually pretty neat. After a while, it will deplete, so you have to, like, you know, have a way to collect stone over time, go to different maps and so on. So, let's see. We should have the stone now. Let's go ahead and set up the second veggie farm. Right next to each other should be just about fine. And let's have Andrew continue doing his little rock thing. And how are we doing in wood now? Nope, not controls. Wood. Ooh, almost out of wood again, huh? That's no good. Let's have some people chop down some trees. Let's take care of these guys right on over here. Alrighty. Andy should go and get ready on that after he's done over here doing that. Arms! These farms should keep you fed for now, but when your colony grows, you need to re you build more farms. Obviously. Uh, remember, you can't eat raw food, you will need to constantly prepare meals. Keep an eye on your water supply, too. Gather water from a nearby well when it starts to run low. We already did that beforehand. Now that you have basic supplies, you should prepare to defend, your defend yourselves. Uh, make some weapons. Craft two clubs. How about I craft three of them? Because I want to equip everybody with clubs. So let's go into... I do believe we need to set up... No, no, no. It's um, crafting if I'm right, right? Yeah, it is. It requires two wood. We have two only, huh? We're going to get some more right now. So let's see. Actually, do we really have two, really? That seems really sketchy. No, we do only have two. Okay, so, Andy, stop working on those, actually. Andy is working on the farms, so it's gonna be his priority. You know what, food is actually kind of important to me, so Andy should probably do that. How's the stone situation happening over here? We're down to eight now, or up to eight now, I should say. Andy's over here just trying to get to this guy. Until Falcon, I'll do it, dog. I'll get the wood for you. It's like, yeah, you will, Andy. <laughs> yeah, you will. Uh, all we need is just two more, dog. Or actually four, to get clubs for everybody. So, you work on that. Andrew's doing his thing over here. Uh, did you get enough? No, you got enough for two weapons, but I want to get all three. So, Andrew, let's stop this. Andrew, get over here and work out on that. Let's go into four times speed. I should speed up the game here a bit more, but, um... At least for the first episode, I'm trying to take it a bit slow, just so you guys can understand what the fuck I'm doing. Uh, Survivor AI, we talked about this already. I can set it up automatically, which is basically the way you want to go with this one. And we have 42 hours worth of food. Hmm, can be a little bit troubling. We need to have to figure out some way to combat that here pretty soon. I guess once we start farming or cropping that up, it should come into play. So let's go into crafting. We'll do one, two... Ah, oh, come on! I wanted three! These clubs should help you defend yourself from smaller groups of weaker demons, but in order to survive, you can't just keep your head low. You need to figure out what is going on out there and gather your supplies from nearby towns. You might want to make some better weapons before heading out. You already know how to make basic bows. Scavenge basic bows? No, I don't. You told me about the clubs, not the bows, you liar. Scavenge a nearby location. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, I know how to do that. That's cool. Look, look, just pause it for a second. Assistance needed. We have noticed someone being chased by creatures in your colony. If we send a team to assist him, he might join our colony, so we'll probably get a fourth individual to join us if we save this guy's life, huh? Pause momentarily. Strange, stranger requires assistance. Rescue missions are launched from the world map. Okay, um, crafting. Oh, yeah, you know how to make bows now, don't you? No, I don't, you liar. <laughs> I need arrows. I don't even know. Oh, you probably need to the workbench, and then you make arrows from the workbench. Uh, uh-huh, that would probably make sense. Speaking of the workbench, we have enough to make it happen. So let's set this up over here. I know a person needs help. I will go and help them out pretty soon. Now, here's a pretty interesting mechanic about the game. You cannot leave your base unattended. So if you send people out, at least one person has to remain behind in case you get invaded. Meanwhile, you're on a mission. It can't happen, mind you. So... 
Uh, I think we'll probably send... Let's see who's my better fighters here. We're going to go with... Andy's an alien abductee. <laughs> he's handy and he's a brute. Andrew is a weirdo. I can tell that. And Harry is a vegan and an addict. Um, combat zero, science three. I guess we'll, we'll take Andrew and Andy with us. And Harry will stay behind to just continue researching us. So, let's go into the map. And we have a rescue mission right next to our area, as you can see over here. So, we'll go ahead and... There's a person in need of help over here. And we have two enemies, two imps. Not two really difficult enemies, so we'll send a rescue. And we'll send Andy and Andrew. And I want you guys equipped with the old clubby club. I forgot to equip you, did I? I did. Luckily, the game gives you a chance to equip before you leave, so that's good. Uh, we can still build some defenses and apparently some sort of ammo belt or something. We'll see about that later. But for now, let's send these two individuals out here. And they'll go out there and do their thing. Time just run in real time. Meanwhile, I could jump back into the map. Meanwhile, and see what's happening. But here we are at the combat mission. There are hostile creatures nearby. Eliminate all enemies in order to complete the mission. Now, the combat over here is going to be all real time, mind you. So, you can read over here if you want to check this out. I, for the most part, have an idea what I'm doing. So, let's see. I like how if you need a retreat, <laughs> you could run over here and it says retreat. It's kind of like, hey, dummy, you can't figure it out? Come over here. So I'm gonna select these guys. There's gonna be a cover system as well because if there's like you, if you're running like against demons with range combat or range attacks, you could actually hide behind, you know, stuff like this and try to take some coverage. Kind of works a little bit like XCOM, but not quite. But it's all in real time as well, which is actually pretty neat. So right now we have to scope out the map and find out where these imps might be at. All right. So far, so I could speed this up, but obviously for a, a combat mission, I'd rather just go a bit slow. Let me zoom out. Huh. I could split up the group as well, but I don't think that's a really good idea right now. We're definitely going to want to have to, like, you know, tag team these demons, if you catch what I mean. <laughs> tag team and demons, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's a fetish somewhere. I'm running. I'm, <laughs> I'm over here coming back to my Honeycam Studio shit. We go from cake farting to, to tag teaming demons. Oh my god. Oh, there's an imp! Okay, we have one. Now, let me pause momentarily. 43% um, chance to hit with our melee clubs. This is going to be affected by range, obviously. Um, if you're behind, if you're in front, if they're next to some sort of defensive coverage, etc., etc. So right now, we're going to have to deal with this guy, and then his friend's going to back him up afterwards, right? So we're going to have both of our dudes just tag team. Old Mr. Imp. Let's go. Let's do it. I like to move it, move it. I like to club it, club it. Club him! Oh, he's down. And now, hey, Andy, you want to help out over here too, dog? Andy, over here. Yeah, thank you. Help Andrew out, please. I like to move it, move it. I like to club it, club it. You know who that is? That's all Andy, because he's the one with the brute skill. So, I'm not sure you saw Andrew was hitting him, but it wasn't really too much damage. Then Andy came into play, and it was like, you know, half of his HP gone in one swell soup. So, Andy is indeed our, our killer here, the brute, obviously. We killed two enemies, two imps. We got two sulfur from the imps, I have to imagine. Uh, resources used in occult rituals and crafting can be obtained by killing weaker demons. And obviously, killing demons is also going to be required for um, different researches and crafting down the line as well. If you want some really OP items, you have to go and kill some really difficult demons as well. And other. Bertha has joined the colony. Alrighty, Bertha. Welcome aboard. Um, so, let's see. My people should be coming back. There they are. And here's everybody! Okay, let's pause momentarily here. Let's see where are these people at. Let's see, I see Andrew already Andrew's already back to work. Look at this guy. He doesn't, you know, waste a beat. You should probably get some HP back, dog. Harry's over here doing his thing, and he's um working in the crops again, and Bertha should be showing up here pretty soon. Bertha! Here's Bertha, let's find out about Bertha. She is a brute! Ooh, another combatant. Perfect. So I'm gonna try to get you a weapon here pretty soon. Can I craft one for you now? Yes! Make one more weapon. Ooh, you could actually craft the arrows from here. And, oh, you can make the bow afterwards. Not sure why the game told me to make the the clubs instead of the bow then, and it's mentioned the, the bow. I guess I'm still hung up on the bow. But you can make the arrows from the crafting menu as well. It just requires wood. That would obviously make sense. Alrighty. So she'll come back over here. Somebody will build that. Actually, somebody should be able to make that other club here pretty soon. Now, how's her food looking? 27? Ooh, that's actually a really low amount of food here. Uh, let's see. Maturity is too low. You are harvesting the crops, right? Water is too high. I mean, Andy should automatically be taking care of this stuff, I'm pretty sure. So, maturity is 88. 
immaturity is at zero. So that should probably, that probably just came in right now then, huh? Okay, cool. So we're going to wrap it up here for this episode, guys. I just wanted to give you a quick introduction to Judgment. This is the basics of it. We still have to cover being raided. Our village, your little camp over here, can be raided by demons. We still have to talk about the minerals, the metals, etc., etc. And also, you know, going out there and scavenging and doing some other looting missions as well. But we will cover that next episode and then the ones to come forward. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up. Leave a like to support us me a lot. Stick around for the next episode. I will catch you next time.